Hey everybody, welcome. It is Gleecon here. Happy to be with you all. We are ready to start the latest episode of The Lore of Warcraft. So in this episode, this is a doozy as far as I know. Um, if you Google like any kind of Warcraft history timeline, you can find these ancient like timelines of different events that have occurred. So we're still kind of squarely in the prehistory phase, but almost all of them reference this event, Sargeras and the Betrayal. So let's find out about it. The Keepers went about their duties on Azeroth, unaware of a new threat that was taking shape in the distant reaches of the Great Dark. Sargeras, having broken all ties with the Pantheon, meditated on the fate of the universe in isolation. His fear that the Void Lords had already corrupted other world souls consumed him. As doubt and despair continued twisting the Titans' every thought, he became more certain than ever that creation itself was fatally flawed. Finally, he concluded that the only way to spare the universe was to purge it in fire. Thus, his grand burning crusade would begin. To accomplish this burning crusade, Sargeras required a vast force of unquenchable rage. He knew of only one place that held such power and potential, Mardun, the Plain of Banishment. Over the ages, the prison had become bloated with fell magic and vengeful demons. Their presence had warped Mardum, transforming it into a realm of nightmare. Torrents of fell energy ceaselessly bombarded the prison's walls, bathing the captive demons in a roiling sea of volatile magic. Sorry, guys. Sargeras quelled his remaining apprehension and tore the prison asunder, spilling its wrathful denizens into the great dark beyond. The subsequent explosion of fell magic was powerful beyond even what the fallen titan had imagined. Violent energies enveloped Sargeras, surging through his veins and searing his very soul. His eyes burst in gouts of emerald fire. Fell volcanoes ignited across his once noble form, splitting his skin apart and revealing an endless furnace of blistering hate. Yet despite these horrific, horrific physical changes, Sargeras' mind remained locked on his one all-consuming purpose. To prevent the Void Lords from possessing creation, life itself had to be extinguished. In shattering the prison, Sargeras had ruptured the boundary between the Great Dark and the Twisting Nether. A monstrous celestial maw, limbed in a war storm of emerald fire, had ripped through the fabric of reality. It would remain a scar on creation, smoldering proof of Sargeras' madness for all eternity. Demons of every shape and size poured into the physical universe from this rift, howling in triumph at their release. Sargeras imbued the ravenous masses with his power, uniting them as one in an inferno of fell magic. Though many demons had previously tapped into the volatile energies of the Nether, none had ever experienced the pure might and rage found in Sargeras' fell. Some of the creatures grew in size and stature, still others felt new cunning and intelligence unfold in their minds. By this point, Sargeras had learned more about the nature of demons, including how to permanently destroy their spirits. He offered a simple pact in exchange for the demon's newfound power. Fight at his command, or be extinguished. It was not a difficult choice. To thwart the Void Lord, Sargeras unleashed his new army, his Burning Legion upon the innumerable worlds of the Great Dark. Never before had the forces of evil been united in such numbers. Sargeras wielded enough power to make disobedience all but unthinkable. None would dream of challenging him, but more importantly, his minions grew to delight in their role as agents of extinction. The Burning Legion fell upon its first world. Though it did not contain the slumbering Titan, it was a world that had been ordered by the Pantheon in ages past. Sargeras's forces incinerated the mortal civilizations that dwelled there, wiping out dozens of sentient species. When the Constellar, whom the Pantheon had charged to oversee the world, arrived, Sargeras himself annihilated the celestial being. Agrimar was the first to learn of the Constellar's demise. As more news of the Burning Legion's atrocities reached him, he hunted down the demonic army. Agrimar arrived just in time to witness the Legion scouring yet another world, and he saw the twisted, fire-wreathed breathing being leading it, his mentor and greatest friend, Sargeras. Agrimar was stunned. He demanded an explanation from Sargeras. The former champion offered none, only declaring that his burning legion was the sole means to purify the universe. Anyone who stood against him, Sargeras added, would burn in the fires of his legion as well. 
Knowing that he could not sway Sargeras with words, Agrimar challenged his former mentor, mentor to singer, single combat. Before the watching eyes of the demon masses, the two greatest warriors the universe had ever known came to blows. Agrimar soon found himself outmatched. Like all titans, he was uniquely susceptible to fell magic. Sargeras' ferocious assaults shattered Agrimar's defenses and sent him reeling in agony. In a final, desperate counterattack, Agrimar summoned all the power at his command and struck at Sargeras. Their two blades met, igniting a furious explosion of fell and arcane power. When the torrent of warring energies finally subsided, Sargeras and Agrimar saw that both of their weapons had been shattered. Heavily wounded by the blast, Agrimar retreated from the battle and returned to the, re to the rest of the pantheon. Disbelief gripped the other titans as they learned what had happened. The thought of their most trusted and noble warrior falling to darkness shook their faith to the core. The Pantheon could not fathom how to stop such a threat, and yet they agreed they could not sit idly by. Girded for war, the combined might of the Pantheon confronted Sargeras and his unholy legion near a world named Nihilam. Amon Thul called out to Sargeras, pleading with him to abandon his mad burning crusade. He told Sargeras of Azeroth, a fledgling world soul with more potential than any of the that the uh, any of the pantheon had ever seen, a being strong enough to defeat the Void Lords in due time. Sargeras listened carefully, but was unmoved. Despite his earlier battle with Sargeras, Agrimar believed that something noble still lingered deep in the former champion's heart. At a last resort, he laid down his arms and approached the fallen titan. Agrimar recounted tales of their glorious battles against demons reminding Sargeras of the sacred oaths they had sworn to protect creation. But Sargeras was set in his ways. Nothing the Pantheon could say, nothing even his cherished protege could say, would ever change his mind. With a howl of rage and sorrow, Sargeras struck Agrimar down, he, his ruined fell blade nearly cleaving the titan in two. Infuriated by this unthinkable murder, the Pantheon launched an all-out assault on Sargeras and his burning legion. Stars withered and died as the battle raged across the cosmos, scarring vast stretches of reality. Neelum, known thereafter as the Doom World, became warped and twisted by the apocalyptic conflict. The titans of the Pantheon wielded powers incomprehensible to mortal minds, yet even they could not overcome Sargeras's fell-fueled might. The fallen titan decimated the Pantheon members with fell fire until he had broken their will to fight. To seal their demise, Sargeras summoned a massive fell storm that would consume their bodies and souls alike. Yet just as the furious onslaught of energy washed over the defeated titans, Norganon made one last attempt to stave off oblivion. Norganon bent the raw energies of the universe to his will, weaving a protective shroud around each of the Pantheon titan's spirits and launching them into the great dark. While the titan's disembodied souls hurtled through the cosmos, Sargeras' fell storm obliterated what remained of their physical forms. Unaware that the titan's spirits had survived, Sargeras declared the Burning Legion victorious. The Pantheon was no more, and he now had tantalizing clues about a powerful world soul called Azeroth. Yet, though Sargeras had learned the name of this nascent titan, its whereabouts remained a mystery. Nonetheless, without the Pantheon to oppose him, he knew he would find the world soul in time. And he knew he would have to do so before the Void Lords did. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this particular episode, um, in this particular chapter. Very interesting stuff, but I think uh, the most important beats here are that Sargeras is, um, again, he's, he's a, a good villain type as far as storytelling goes because he does have that ultimate at its core, what he believes is a good motive, uh, which is destroying all of life in the universe, because that's the only way it can be saved. And that's kind of key to going back to ultimately, if you remember in the very, very beginning, um, the the great dark, that's, well, that's like space, but you have the, you have the, where the Void Lords come from, they represent what's pure evil. And then you have the Pantheon and the Titans that are just sort of pure good, and, and therefore since Azeroth is a Titan, Azeroth is being pure good. But the demons were always this more neutral thing, maybe a chaotic neutral, um, just bent on running around sowing chaos, but they're not necessarily evil at heart. And so Sargeras, and I guess if you think by extension demon hunters, while they're tapping this fell energy, and the fell energy is the thing that can ultimately be used to destroy the Titans, it's still this... Uh, 
ultimately at heart neutral thing. So at some point in time, the Burning Crusade, the Legion, they really want the Void Lords out more than anything. So as these things go on, that's something to keep in mind as we read deeper. But this was a big, big thing because the Titans now are gone. They're not eradicated. Their souls are floating in deep space somewhere. But that force of good is really gone. And all we have is the few keepers on Azeroth that are going to ultimately have to protect them. And the dragons, the uh, whatever they were called, the primal dragons or whatever, those five people. Uh, those are really all that's going to stand now between Azeroth and complete destruction by one, the Burning Legion, and two, the Void Lords. So this is setting up with the cards stacked against this. And I know we have a lot more things coming up, um, things that I think are going to make the grim, the picture look even more grim and dark as the time is going forward. Hey, I appreciate everyone's patience. I appreciate you listening to me. This was a lot to read. Um, and I know I had a little bit of audio um, clutter going on in the background. I appreciate you guys riding it out with me. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing where this story goes next and uh, for you guys coming on the ride with me. Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.